Red Star and FG 4 0 today in the preseason tournament. In the first game, Red Star beat Zenit, a very good Russian side. Uh, 2 1, I guess it was. I, f I forgot it was two, three days ago. But uh, I wanted to take some time to talk about uh, some of the talking points from the. I mostly want to focus on this last game against Nefchi, where, I mean, I don't know where to start from. I, I guess we'll start from um, Barak Bahar's press to the point that Nefchi had a really tough time even getting the ball out of their 18 yard box. Um, it's just a culmination of different things, I think, of shifting players into different positions, which honestly we're kind of used to, if you're a Red Star fan, you're used to um, players switching positions because we've seen that with past, past managers. We saw that with Stankovic, we saw that with Milojevic to the point where, and I'm going to talk about some of the players that we used to have, but, or still on the team, but uh, Katai Kanga, or sorry, Katai Ivanic and Bukhar, uh, Osman Bukhari, who used to switch positions a lot during a match, uh, that still happens with this team. So sometimes it's Olayinka who plays up top where he presses the goalkeeper, which he did, I thought, extraordinarily well today. Uh, sometimes it's it's uh, Jean Philippe Crasso who does that. Sometimes it's it's Bukhari who does that, and, and it feels like every time it's someone different who who has you know, the task of pressuring the goalkeeper. And I, I thought it worked really well today. I thought it worked really well against the Zenit team that's very good to the point where even Zenit had a, a big time issue getting the ball out of their own half uh, with the press. I was very impressed with that. Um, the one player, if I had to pick one player from the last two matches who was very impressive, Stefan Mitrovic, I lost a little bit of confidence in him last season, uh, at, towards the end of last season where his playing time kind of went down um, just didn't look like himself, not a lot of confidence going forward. Now he's kind of shifted into a different position where, he, where he's a left wing back. So to kind of look at the roster, you still have Azado there and you still have uh, Milan Rodic there. Azado coming off the U21s with Georgia where he performed very well. Um, so I'm happy to see Azado back as well and to see this little battle between, I think it's probably going to be Mitrovic and Azado and, you know, Rodic could kind of bring on as a veteran player. Um, but to see the battle between those two for, for that starting left wing back position, if we do go with a 4-3-1-2 or 4-3-2-1 um, like we have in the last two games. But Stefan Mitrovic has been the biggest surprise easily in the last two matches. Like I said, I wasn't very high on him at the end of last season. There were some reports that teams were rolling off for four or five million euros. And I kind of said, you know what, cut your, cut your loss, cut your ties and, and take the money. Now, I don't think I would let him go because he has really adjusted to this position. Um, I think with him, the fact that he can do it in both directions, offensively and defensively, is excellent for us. Defensively, no one was able to get by him today. And offensively, he can create a lot for you. He causes a lot of havoc. One-on-ones, he absolutely loves against other players, which is exactly how he scored uh, the second Red Star goal. Um, it's just, he's a completely different player. I think he assisted Bukhari on, on the third goal, I think it was. I mean, he's just, a, it, it's it's almost hard to believe that a player's game or that he can improve that much in a short period of time when we're talking two, three months here. Uh, so I thought he was outstanding today. Again, this is also good for the Serbian national team. I also got to say, when he committed to the Serbian national team, I thought he made a mistake. He should have committed to Canada where there's a bigger chance that he's going to get playing time. We'll see now what happens with that left wing back position. Serbia struggles with that. Um, with, I guess, Andrzej Zikic being pretty much the only option there right now. Um, and I think he can push uh, Zikic if, if he continues to play like this. But I thought he was exceptional. Again, in both directions, like his ability to even take the ball off other players. And I understand it's it's Nefji, no, there's no disrespect to them. But, I mean, in the last two matches, he's been really damn good. And I've been complete, I'm totally impressed with him. Stamenic in the midfield as well as a, what, 19, 20-year-old. Um, completely calm on the ball. Doesn't always have to kind of hit it forward. He can step on the ball a little bit, look for the look for the uh, defenders who are there, Dragovic, Mihailovic, uh, and Rakovic, and he can kind of shift the ball to them, and then he can kind of get the play started as well. They didn't really have a lot of work to do today. Um, Jean-Philippe Casso, again, he hasn't shown... Um, much speed as of yet but his when he gets on the ball he's really hard to take off the ball and it feels like almost like he's moving in slow motion sometimes but his ability to get by three or four guys uh, is absolutely amazing and um you know i'm very happy to see him to have him here and he did exceptionally well today i think everyone played really well today i'm just kind of 
trying to go over the entire roster really quickly. Latin Lad is even, hasn't even played yet, so even when he gets on the pitch, can't wait to see what he has to offer. Ola Inka, who the ball just didn't want to go in the net for him today. He had a, two or three chances. Uh, again, his pressing is kind of reminds me of like what Richmond Boachi brought to the club a number of years ago, who was a fan favorite as well. But he's willing to do a lot of the dir dirty work. And Richmond Boachi was able to score a lot of goals as well. But Ole Inka, and it's going to come for him. He just, he really does work for the team. And I thought in the first match against Zenit, him and Mijatovic um, had a great link up play up top. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that, you know, the two players who haven't really trained or played much together were able to build that much um like confidence and, and chemistry heading into the match so I was really happy with that and I was happy with with Olenka today I was pretty much happy with everyone who played from the first half up until about the 60 62nd minute to when a whole set of changes were made I think it was like six substitutions um yeah the only thing I would say and Bukhari again was <laughs> really good today and I think he was actually Stamenich's midfield partner from the way that the lineups were kind of put out there and I think even need to drop back a little bit too and then that allowed Bukhari again this is this is what I talk about when I say players can interchange positions a lot to where even could sometimes drop back Bukhari can go ahead of him and play kind of like the attacking midfield position Bukhari drops back and then even each goes into attacking midfield position two goals in for even the last two matches I thought at the end of the last season that was even his last um, season with red start to where he would definitely be a starter we heard a lot of talk this summer about players who could come in. Pretty much everyone that we were linked with, we brought into the club, which is, I mean, amazing. And they've all been quality signings. So that's why I thought that even his numbers, days could be numbered. I thought he was really good against Zenit. And again, today, really good, a goal. And he's just like class is permanent. Like he's just a solid player, not very fast, but he has a he has a head that he really thinks with and, and puts the players in, in, in the best position positions to kind of succeed on the goal that he scored he could have laid it off to I think it was Mitrovic or uh, someone else was on the on his other side he could have laid it off but he took it and it was well placed ball that the goalie wasn't stopping again Nefci isn't isn't exactly the the level of Zenit but I thought that they played we played exceptionally well today and you're starting to see Bahar Bakar's work uh, Barak Bakar's work you know really come into play very very quickly you could tell that that, that it's fluid it's fun to watch these guys now um, and just create a lot of chances, score a lot of goals. Uh, youngster Schlievich scoring a goal today as well. I think he's like 17, 18 years old as well. Um, Nedeljkovic, who is the right back, 17 years old, born in 2018, um, I should say. It's turning 18 this year. Um, who's the right back, exceptional. I thought he was even better against Zenit. I think he had a lot more of the ball, to be fair, against Zenit as well. Today, he didn't really have too much of the ball, but... I thought he was exceptional as well. And then one thing I'll, I'll say about to kind of talk about, maybe not the negatives, but something that has kind of transpired in the last two matches, Alex Vigo hasn't played. And Alex Vigo is on loan at Red Star until, I want to say the end of uh, December. So he hasn't played at all, not even a minute in the last two matches, unless they missed something. So he hasn't played. Azarov obviously hasn't played because he was with Georgia, so he is another probably, he might be, available for next match we'll see what happens but he was given a little bit of a break uh Mitulkic hasn't played much Lekovic hasn't played much so we'll see what happens with that but he it's kind of something to keep in the back of your mind to now where you can have even if you don't think Nedeljkovic is the right player going forward for you know the Champions League matches you might be able to switch Mitrovic on that side and then you have Azarov on, on the left and that way you keep Mitrovic in the side and you could also bring in Azarov we'll see what happens with him as well there's a lot of rumors that um I think Shakhtar Donetsk was offering 5 million uh, euros for Zaro. So we'll see what happens with that. But it's just a lot of good problems to have for Barak Bakar. And he's really put his stamp on this team. I'm very impressed. Like I said, I knew about the press before he got to Red Star because we did play Maccabi Haifa. So we got to see it firsthand. But but the players go all out for 90 minutes. Like there is no, you know, we're up 3-0. We're going to take our foot off the gas pedal. No, it's, it's pedal to the metal until the end. Been very impressed the last two matches. And I'm not someone who's... I'm not going to be someone who's easily impressed. Like, I need to see results now because we're in the Champions League group stage now. There's no qualifying for us. We need to see results. And we need to see them fast. And we're seeing that now. Champions League is a different beast to where you're going to be playing the best clubs from around the world. But I think these tune-up matches are great for the team to develop chemistry and to kind of see what your starting 11 is going to look like. 
Um, next match, Wednesday, 12.30 Toronto time against Fenerbahce, which is going to determine who the champion of this cup is. Uh, so I can't wait for that. But I've been, comp I've been, I don't want to say over the moon, but I've been really impressed with how quickly this has all uh, been able to work together. You can tell the guys are having fun uh, playing as well. So like I said, I can't wait to see what the next match holds against Fenerbahce on Wednesday.